I recently remade Seven Lines song, Stop Thinking. And it turned out like this. Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. If you're tired of hearing me complain about your super saw drops and roasting you, being all like, you can't just do that, you need a lead. This is your video, because today I'm gonna show you how Seven Lions makes his melodies and his leads. Let's a freaking do this. First, set the BPM to 170. Sometimes before even picking a sound, I recommend coming up with a catchy melody. Sometimes you do start with the sound design, sometimes you do start with the melody, but for the sake of this video, a simple melody like this can be made using an ostinato. An osta what? Ostinato. It's a classical music term, which is something I don't expect you to remember, but essentially it's just a short melody or pattern that's repeated over and over. By writing ostinatos, it stops you from overcomplicating your melodies, and you'll hear these all over melodic dubstep and future bass now that I've told you about them. This is the one used by Seven Lions, and these are all the notes he uses. Notice how he alternates between one note and another pretty frequently, only changing it closer to the end. And he always goes back to that E, and that'll sound like this. Notice how it just keeps repeating, there's no change. And if your brain is having trouble keeping things simple, it helps when you write it alongside a chord progression. If you want more info on these chords, stay till the end of the video and I'll tell you how to make them. When you lock Ableton, or whatever DAW you're in, into the scale, writing these ostinatos and melodies becomes even easier. In this case, it's A major. So you can click this button, set it to A major, and then click this button up here to lock it into the scale so that whatever note you put down in the piano roll stays in key. Enough music theory, nerd. I clicked on this video to hear about sound design. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. I promise, your sound design is going to be much easier when you have a cool melody to work off of. <laughs> Whatever, loser. Listen to this analog masterpiece that I just made. Amazing, right? Ooh. Please don't pay attention to him. To turn this melody into a Seven Lions lead. For this video, I'll be using Serum. But if Serum is something you can't afford, you can easily follow along in Vital. First, layer number one. I call this the main layer. The first thing you wanna have is Oscillator A set to the init patch. I'm using this cause I want a clean sound that cuts right through. And saw waves are great for this aka the init patch, which is a saw wave. In the detune section and unison section, I turn it up to three and put the detune knob around here. Because even though the main sound is present, adding a little width and thickness through unison will help it fill out the mix. <laughs> but nothing can compare with the warmth and the tone of analog equipment, okay? You aren't a real producer until you get analog equipment. Ahem, can you not see the amazing gear that I use behind you? Why don't you use those? Okay, and how many songs have you made on this thing? Two. Tell me about how easy it is to get it in tune. Uh, ooh, what about MIDI compatibility? Can it do that? Uh, I'm not against analog equipment at all. And if you're good, you can apply these same parameters to whatever synth you're using. Absolutely, you're gonna get a higher quality sound from analog gear, but you gotta know how to use it first. More importantly, don't let some analog Andy gaslight you into thinking that you can't make music unless it's got warm, lush analog tones. Your music production journey leads you to that side of things with analog gear, then claps all around, that's awesome. Just remember that foundational knowledge is more important than whatever $2,000 synth you just bought. All right, I get it. You just go back to how you make the rest of the sound. Hey, you're the one who distracted me. Let's finish up this sound. Next thing we're gonna do is attach LFO2 over to the noise. So there's a tiny noise fall off. Over in the effects tab, we're turning on distortion, compressor, and filter. These are the settings I use for all three of them. We're attaching LFO2 to filter, set to MG low, and this helps clean up and tighten the sound. Listen without, and with. 
Very subtle, but works really nicely. Onto processing, EQ to cut out the lows and the highs, a modified OTT set to these settings. This really flattens out the sound and you can really hear the noise oscillator pumping through now, which adds extra transients. So that helps really cut it through the mix. And that's the main sound. As you notice, there's no reverb or anything because we want this main sound to be up front and center. Now we're gonna get to the part where we make sounds that probably no one will hear. But if these aren't there, they're gonna sound empty. I'm making a brand new track and copy pasting my Austin Auto Melon. Open up Serum. Instead of patching it, <laughs> we're using BS2 Filthy, which is found under the analog wavetables. Right there. Ba ba. Hooray. Position goes up around here. Ignore the unison, the detune's down all the way so that won't affect anything. The more important thing about this sound is this envelope. I've made it extremely plucky with these settings. So that the sound barely exists, just like my love life. Adding a high pass filter to get rid of all the lows. Because the goal is for a thin sound, but it supports the main synth with additional transients and a little extra punch and tone. It's still a little hard to hear, so we're gonna add some processing. Of course, we got our wombo combo, and now we put the reverb on this synth to give the sound more space. Rather than putting it on the main synth, we put it on a background synth, so that gets pushed to the back while still letting the main synth up front. Are you sick of this melody yet? <laughs> well, we got a few more layers to go. <laughs> Next is what I like to call the loose layer. And it's a classic trick that I used to do when I recorded and wrote pop punk music. The trick was if you wanted to make a guitar leads shine a bit more, the concept was to find a random synth sound that would copy what the guitarist plays for another layer of tone. And back in the day, us pop punk kids did not know how to describe synth sounds because we were too busy hating our hometown. The random sound in question was some kind of string sound like Panic of the Disco or something, you know, the one they use in that song about doors. Nowadays, I just call it a loose layer because it sounds like this. Dude, that doesn't even sound like the Panic of the Disco song. What am I saying? But to make this, we're using the wavetable distorted sub DKS found in digital. Over there, position to here so that you can add more waves. Notice here envelope one has the sustain turned up all the way so that the notes bleed into each other, which is opposite to what the pluck did. Turn on mono and legato so that we can smooth out the notes even more. But the really nice part about this sound is this filter, the reverb filter. So if you uh, go to miscellaneous, the reverb filter is over here. Setting it oscillator one and turning the mix all the way up. Activating envelope two and giving it this kind of shape. Attach it to the frequency just like this. But if you notice, it's not very high. Like it's a very, very small amount of change. But works out fantastic. Once you click on effects, we're gonna use a serum only effect, unfortunately. Sorry, vital users. But that's gonna be hyper dimension. Turn that on and put it to these settings, mix basically to 50% here. Or if you don't have Serum, the Chorus Ensemble Ableton effect is a good alternative. Because the only goal is to add a bit more space and wideness to the sound. And uh, ignore this last filter here. The mix is all the way down anyway, so you can ignore him. Go away. <laughs> we don't need you. The whole time I had this playing, the processing was on. Let me play it with you off. So all it is, Wombo combo as usual. EQing out the lows and the highs. And once again, adding reverb to give it the same effect that we did to the pluck sound. Adding reverb to our background plucks so that it adds space to the lead without causing it to sound like it's drowned out in reverb. Listen to how that layers so nicely. But if you're wondering why it doesn't quite sound right yet, here, this is the secret sauce. This one trick will change your life. Yeah, something like that for the YouTube algorithm, okay? And it sounds like... Are you serious? What is that trash? How on earth can you even think about putting something like this in a masterpiece of emotion. I don't know, that's how producing is sometimes. You just mess around and find something cool, even if you don't 100% have a goal yet. Okay, so to make this, duplicate this synth that we just made, change the wavetable to MB soft. 
Nope, not MB saw. MS saw. MS saw. <laughs> Actually sounds pretty normal. But when we turn on the filter, using ring mod number two, but the volume's turned down. So we're gonna go into effects, add compressor for extra OTT, which will bring up the volume and chorus for a bit more wideness. Now it's weird. Once again, this filter is not being used, go away. I'm not sure why this works, but I could act smart and be all like, yup, it adds extra textures and semitones to thicken up the main lead. But honestly, this was an accident. Lastly, when the drums finally kick in, I actually hear a little piano. Just use the free plugin Visco 2. Now I'm not 100% sure if this is in the song, but I just wrote a little counter melody with a few longer held out notes. Because by this point, I wasn't really trying to remake it exactly and putting in what I just thought sounded cool. But you said remake? You're a clickbaiter, you're the worst. I'm ignoring you now. OTT, saturator, reverb, EQ. That's it. Altogether, sounds like. Now this is just how Seven Lions does it for his specific songs, but you can use these as starting points for your own leads. And if you're wondering, yo, how do I make these chords? I like how they sound. I actually made a video on that right over here. You can watch that there, or you can check out this entire melodic bass future dubstep, wait, melodic dubstep and future bass playlist. If you want to support me even further, check out my Patreon. Big shout out to the VIPs who are already on Patreon. Y'all pay me to keep making these videos for you. So thank you so much. Thank you for watching and clicking on this video. Now go make some bangers.